What is going on everyone? Please, please, please subscribe if you have not already. I am doing more and more stock analysis. The more that you subscribe, the more I'm more willing to make a video. <laughs> so please, please, please do consider subscribing and let's get right into this video. So what we're going to look at today is Redfin. Redfin is a an online real estate listing website. And they also have their actual own real estate agents, unlike Zillow or Realtor.com. You can actually hire a Redfin uh, real estate agent. So I really like this because it's different from Zillow. They have different kinds of listings and they actually have their own listing agents. It's a competitive advantage of theirs. And as we can see, Redfin today, as of December 14th, 2020, was up about 7.72%. They are just, you know, having a great year so far, and we'll get into that last. But as you can see, they're, they've got 11 total analysts offering stock ratings for it. Seven have a buy, three have a hold, and only one have a sell. And even though, yes, this says that there's an 18% downside on the average analyst price target, we also do see a high of about 65. So if we can stay consistently around 65, I think that this will push over 65 uh, very soon, if not in the next few days to this next week. So with that being said, let's look at the stock analysis and it's listed as an eight. There's a lot of growth opportunity and room for improvement with Redfin. Again, its technology is very, very good. And it's one of those, you know, real estate plays that no, it doesn't pay a dividend, but it's a huge growth stock in terms of, you know, how well it can do compared to something like Zillow that's already killing it and already has its own competitive advantages. So let's look at the fundamentals. Let's look at Redfin's income statement. So as we can see, Redfin has not yet hit a billion dollars in revenue, but wow, it almost doubled from 2018 to 2019. That's crazy. It has not done that in literally its entire history. So something is going on. Something is cooking up in Redfin's, you know, income and in its revenue. So let's take a look at its net income. And yes, it still does produce a loss, but I think that's because of the technology that's driving behind it. There's more investment in it, and this is a pure growth stock, a technology real estate stock that has not yet produced, uh, you know, net income. So that's positive. So this is something that you're going to have to wait probably a little bit to actually see some type of profit come out of Redfin. And as I said, it hasn't even hit a billion in revenue yet. Let's check out its balance sheet. And this is actually one of the reasons why I like this stock when I'm analyzing it more than Zillow. So they have total cash of about $234 million. Yes, it went down a little bit from 2018, but that's okay. Current assets are $451 million versus total current liabilities, $85 million. This is why I like um, Redfin way more than Zillow. They have four times the current asset, a little bit over four times the current assets versus the current liabilities. If you look at Zillow, and we're not going to get into them today, but if you go look at them, they actually have higher debt. And yet someone like Redfin has only had debt in its last two years and only has $119 million in long-term debt. That's pretty good. And again, they're super liquid. Like, they don't have much in their way if things were to go downhill. They have some cash in the bank, and they also have better working capital than Zillow. So this is the biggest reason why I like uh, Redfin over Zillow. And then let's check out the cash flow statement. 
So checking out the cash flow statement, obviously we know that the net income was negative 80 million. So they're, they don't necessarily have an income yet. They don't have a, a positive net income. So let's check out the acquisitions. They've not really made any acquisitions. So that cannot be why their cash pile went down, but it does look like they have bought some of their investments. So they've bought up probably, you know, some of their, uh, you know, different kinds of preferreds and different kinds of debt and things like that. Uh, Long-term debt issuances here we can see, you know, they have started issuing more debt because why not? Money is at zero, money is very cheap, and they are getting in on it too. They probably used this for something. Uh, that they really needed. I feel like they wouldn't do it if they didn't need it. And they also repaid a lot of it. So whatever they took out, they planned to pay almost all of it right away. That's a huge sign of a healthy company. They didn't just, you know, have this all at zero and then let this keep growing. Even though we don't like seeing this grow, this isn't bad at all. And as we saw by the total long-term debt and the total working capital, it's not that bad. It's not out of hand, let's just say that. So um, let's now look at a portfolio of Redfin. So if you had invested in Redfin, it actually, the only time period that we have is it IPO'd in August, 2017 and we have until November 2020. If you had invested in Redfin $10,000 on its IPO date in August 2017, you would have a total of about $15,291 today, in no, or today, but it's really November. Um, that's a 15% CAGR, and that's pretty good. That's something to sneeze at. Again, this is a newer stock, and it's, it, it is behind, especially in, uh, you know, market comparison to Zillow. It is behind Zillow, but it should be catching up and maybe one day it could become bigger if they're run properly. I still do like them. Look at this. They're up 126% in 2020. This is why, this is my second reason other than the working capital. This is the second reason why I like Redfin so much. So let me know what you think if you did watch this video. This is a little bit shorter than the other ones. And please, please, please do consider subscribing. I really appreciate it. Thank you.